Snail infestations could wipe out your entire collection of orchids. It's as serious as that. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Anupama and you are watching Orchid Anu. A little about myself. I am an orchid hobbyist and blogger. I write on orchid culture and care. To give you some perspective about my grow conditions, I live in Mumbai in India which has a tropical climate. I grow my orchids on the window sills of my third floor apartment which receive plenty of sunlight and fresh air. Today my topic of discussion is on snail infestations in orchids. My orchids are being attacked by bush snails and it has come out of the blue. At first I thought it was only one orchid but on further inspection I noticed tiny bush snails on other orchids too and have been on my wits end trying to get them under control. Fortunately, since I grow my orchids in sections on my window sills, only a small portion of my collection is affected. While the process of elimination is still on, I have conservatively tried to eliminate snails without the use of chemical pesticides such as metaldehyde. Based on my experience, I will give you tips on how to ensure that your orchid collection remains pest free. Bush snails are tiny and have a shell on their back. They chew mostly on new roots, tender new growths, buds and leaves. Loss of roots and root tips is especially worrying as it affects the nutritional uptake of the orchid thereby preventing it from developing properly. This also affects the stability of the plant which discourages it from sending out bud spikes. Therefore, it is very important that we eliminate the snails at the earliest. Check your orchids for chewed up roots and root tips. I did notice some bruised root tips but always put it down to mechanical damage or assume the tips dry, dried up due to lack of nutrients. I also assume that it may have been caused by insects such as thrips. I am very much disturbed as I am facing snail infestations for the first time in my 5 years of orchid growing. It so happened that it had rained throughout the previous night and the next morning as I surveyed my happy orchids, I was thinking they look nice and healthy and have enjoyed getting soaked in the goodness of rainwater. On closer inspection, I was shocked to see a number of tiny snails crawling all over one of my vanda orchids, probably hatchlings that were nested in the roots of the vanda orchid. Since it was raining throughout the night, probably the snails decided to come out of hiding. I was shocked and terrified of losing all my orchids as snails spread very quickly. At that time, I thought that only one of them was affected as all the other orchids looked clean. But I knew there would be more in hiding. So I decided to take care of the immediate emergency at hand and later scrutinize the other orchids for snails. The best thing to do in such a scenario is to physically remove the snails and make a thorough investigation to check for any more hiding in the root system. Since my vanda grows in a slatted basket with cork bark chunks, I did not want to disturb its root system as I would damage a lot of roots. I immediately set about removing the snails that were visible. I used a q-tip or cotton bud and an absorbent kitchen towel to remove the snails. The q-tip worked very well as the snails clung to the cotton fiber. I could place the snails on the towel without worrying over them sneaking away. You could also use toothpicks to reach into narrow crevices and remove any hiding in between the sheets and leaf bracts. With the immediate threat resolved, I brought the infested vanda inside for a thorough inspection. I did not want to treat it with chemical pesticides such as metaldehyde or with hydrogen peroxide as I wish to avoid their usage as much as possible. I left the vanda as it is and have quarantined it from my other orchids. Having taken care of the emergency, I then wondered about how the snails came into my collection. 
I have a dedicated grow space that is well protected so the snails could have come along with the orchids that I purchased recently. Normally, I report my purchased orchids at the earliest, but since I was a tad busy, I decided to report one of them later. I did not find any snails in the medium while reporting the other orchids and the roots seemed healthy. With no signs of chewed up roots, I assumed none of them had snails. Now I need to find out the source of the pest infestation. I must act quickly to prevent more such pest attacks. I have quarantined the orchids until I report it at the earliest. Later, I checked on the infested orchid at midnight and found some more tiny snails close to its root system and the base of the plant. I was sure there would be more snails hiding in the root system. So the next morning, I immersed the vanda in a tub of water for an hour. This would help dislodge any leftover snails into the water. As expected, I found a few snails in the water. I repeated my nightly checks and immersed the vanda in a water tub every morning for the next week or so until I was sure that all the snails had been eliminated. I haven't come across any snails since the last two days. I just hope that's the last I see of them. I also carried out similar night checks for my other orchids and found tiny snails on the vandas. On immersing them individually in water tubs for about 15 minutes, the snails came out of hiding and began moving to the upper portions of the orchid that were dry. Using Q-tips, I removed the snails and placed them on a mat. I repeated this for the next couple of days and now my vandas seem to be free of them. However, I would be checking on them every day until I am sure they are all free of snails. I did look up snail infestation discussion threads on the orchid board, a few research papers and conservative remedial measures on YouTube. Some of the conservative methods included coffee grounds, powdered eggshells, diatomaceous earth, fermented yeast solution, copper tape, magnesium sulphate, garlic and coffee concoction and even seaweed fertilizer application. These applications create an undesirable environment for snails. I have begun trying them out one by one and will inform you on what works best. There were also the more aggressive methods such as application of metaldehyde pellets, iron phosphate and hydrogen peroxide which I may consider using if the snails return in my collection. With this experience behind me, I wish to give you tips on how you can prevent such pest attacks. My first tip would be to keep a keen eye on your orchids and inspect them for pests every day. You could do this while watering and fertilizing them. On noticing something wrong or a pest infestation, Immediately quarantine them and physically remove the pests if possible. My next suggestion would be to inspect your snail infested orchid late in the night as snails come out of hiding at night. Remove them from the plant and repeat this until you are sure that your orchid is free of these pests. Use countermeasures such as copper tape, diatomaceous earth or coarsely powdered eggshells and coffee grounds to protect your orchids from snails. All these methods provide a physically undesirable environment for snails, thereby acting as barriers. My next tip would be to possibly clean up the infested orchid and repot it in fresh medium. This will doubly ensure that no pests are left behind. If your orchid is bare rooted like my vanda, then immerse it in water for an hour every morning. This will help dislodge the few remaining ones. My next tip would be to quarantine your newly purchased orchids and repot them at the earliest as they may carry snails in their medium. Commercial orchid growers face huge losses due to snail damage. Though they take lot of preventive measures and try their best to not send infested orchids, snails do find their way into their collections sometimes. So one needs to be cautious about these things. 
my last step would be to provide an environment that discourages their growth snails thrive in a damp environment so it is better to keep your grow area dry by watering your orchids every morning rather than evening this will allow excess water to evaporate so hope you find these tips of mine useful with this said every now and then the best of us will face these uncalled for situations you just need to problem solve at the earliest and your orchids will be safe and will bloom very well during the season if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to the channel for regular updates on orchid care do check out my blog you'll find the link in the description below thank you so much for watching and for supporting the channel